everybody. Um, there it is. I was waiting yeah. for that little warning. <laughs> also, I'm sorry, but Ash, I, for some reason, I'm not seeing myself. So I just want to make sure that my hands are centered and everything. Um, so is there something I need to do so that I can see what's happening? For some reason, for me, it's just showing your inspirations. So I am seeing your face right now. And okay. then if I go to your hand camera, I see okay something yes okay i think i, I must I think, have accidentally yeah. clicked so but i think yeah, i got it figured out okay. so sorry about that everybody i have to no go see it from my end too so thank you so much for joining us um thank you for joining me today my name is tamara kelly and as she was saying i'm here to talk about post stitches now hopefully fingers crossed most of you have some crochet experience post stitches are sort of considered an intermediate crochet skill um, it builds upon the basic stitches of single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, treble crochet, etc. Any of those can be turned into a post stitch. So it's taking the stitches you know, and instead of inserting the hook under those top two loops or even just that front or back loop, we're going to be working around the body of the stitch down below in the what we call the post of the stitch. So I'll have some visuals absolutely for you here in a few minutes. Um, but first, before we actually start talking about how to make those fit post stitches, I wanted to talk a little bit about what you can do with post stitches. Um, what happens when you work that stitch, that stitch you know and love, but you're working it in a different place? You can get lots of different effects. One of the main things people make with post stitches are cables. So if you've seen beautifully crocheted cable, um, garments, sweaters, blankets, things like that, there's a lot of really beautiful crochet cables out there and they can get really complicated just like knitting cables but they're all made with these same simple stitches like i say most of which hopefully you probably already have a basic grasp of so let me show you some examples of things i've made with post stitches i don't have any fancy cable things to show you today mine are a little simpler but i think it gives you an idea of the different things that post stitches can do what they really do is they sort of ride on top of the fabric or behind it depending on the kind you're making and it creates a lot of texture. So here I have the Huga Diamond Pillow, which is a pattern I design, and they should be able to drop that link for you in the chat. It's actually two-sided. I made the other side fuzzy, so it's just cabled on the one side, but oh, you can see those diamonds, and you can see how they kind of sit on top of our fabric there. If I slip my finger underneath, those are made with post stitches. Now I also have another example of a pillow I made featuring post stitches, Diagonal Stripes Pillow right here. And this one's a little bit more subtle. This one's made with, I believe, a Bernat blanket. And you can see a little bit more subtly how we've got some texture built in in these diagonals. Oops, looking in the monitor, going backwards here. So built into these diagonal stripes right there. Those are made with post stitches as well. So other things you can make with post stitches, obviously not just pillows or blankets. You can do all kinds of things. I used that same diamond pattern that I just showed you to make some detailing for this plant hanger, which is another free pattern you'll find on your inspirations. Or you can do something completely different. I don't have an example of this, but if you've ever seen anything termed wiggle crochet, where the stitches stand up away from the fabric, you might have a flat surface with some stitches standing up. Wiggle crochet, those are also made with post stitches. And the crocodile stitch. This pattern isn't out yet. It's a real sneak peek that you're getting here. But these uh, crocodile stitches around the edge these are also post stitches. So post stitches can come in lots of different forms and they can look very different. I've got a couple more examples for you here. These are some squares from the Moogly Crochet Along, which is a year long crochet along that I do on my own website. And these squares are designed by other designers, but here you can see another example of that crisscross type of pattern that you can get. Here is one actually that I designed for the crochet along. You can see here I used the cables to create sort of an hourglass pattern that rode right along the surface of the fabric there. And then this one was by another designer, and this one's got some really great uh, post stitch action. You're going to see the effect of the post stitches right here. Let me get my hand in front here. The white that you see peeping out um, under the blue right there, that little ridge. Sorry, it's hard to do that into the monitor right there. That's made with post stitches. The uh, post stitches up here or on top, the front post stitches create that texture. So I just wanted to show you guys some different examples of the different things that post stitches can do. It's not just cables. The same motion, the same technique, if you will, the same little change in those stitches 
is going to allow you to do so many different things um, from the pretty to the practical. Even if you were just making, for instance, a basket, you had a nice flat bottom, all of a sudden you wanted those sides to go up nice and straight. You could use post stitches to start working just for that first row to create those really straight sides. So let's go ahead then and start taking about talking about how to make those. But before I do that, are there any questions? We don't have any questions so far. Okay, great. Um, but to everyone here, my name is Lillian from Young Inspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. So feel free to ask questions in the chat, and we'll be sure that Tamara answers them. Absolutely. Sorry about that, Lillian. I wasn't sure. I saw you were muted before, so I wasn't sure if you were going to come in. No, you're all good. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Great. So for today's class, we're using Karen Big Donut Ogo. I've got a couple of the colorways here. This is the front. That one was over on his back. You can see these are some multicolor yarns. And these are um, standard yarns, but in a different format. Rather than being in a skein, they're in a new patent pending shape. So I think we're going to use the blue one today to demo with. But I just wanted to go ahead and open it up here on camera for those who haven't had a chance to try out Ogo before. Karen Big Donut Ogo is available at uh, Michael's stores around the country. Um, sometimes you might have to order it for pickup if they haven't had a chance to put it out yet, but it is out there. So this is our Ogo. To pull it apart, we find the ends where those colors come together. We just separate those a little bit there until we can find that little plastic tab. I always like to find the little pointy piece right there. Okay, because then I can give it a little tug and hold onto it with my other hand while I take my scissors. And I want to make sure the yarn's out of the way here so I don't cut the yarn. But I'm just going to cut this little plastic line right there. There we are. Then I can go ahead and pull that little plastic line right out of there and start pulling from the end. So I'm going to try working with this color, but I want your feedback. If this turned out to be a little dark, Ogo makes it very easy to switch to another color. So we can change colors pretty easily here without having to work through all of this one if this one turns out to be a little dark here. Sometimes it's hard to guess how these things are going to show up on camera. So what do we do when we are making post stitches? Well, the first row of any project with post stitches, at the very least, has to be regular stitches. So what we're going to need to do is just make a row of double crochets. So let's go ahead and start out with a chain of about 10, 10 chains or so. And then let's double crochet back into those. So you can skip the first two chains if you want to, or skip the first three, whatever works for you. As long as you've got, we'll say, eight double crochets to work into. Just sort of an arbitrary number here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've crocheted ten. So just to get started here, I'm going to skip those first two closest to my hook and double crochet back into each of those chains. Right now, I'm just creating a row of double crochets so we have something to work our post stitches into. That's the thing about post stitches. Because they are worked around the body of other stitches, you have to have other stitches to work them around. So you're not going to find post stitches, unless it's something very unusual, in the very first row of a pattern. It's always going to be something that's going to start at the very soonest in row number two. Like I say, you might find something pretty unusual out there, and I'd be really curious to see it too. But generally, the post stitches have to wait until they've got other stitches to be worked around. Now, the reason I chose double crochets here is because it's one of the most popular stitches to use with post stitches, but you can use post stitches, you can create post stitches with any kind of stitch, and you can work them around any kind of stitch. But as I say, double crochets are just the easiest and most standard one for us to start with. So I just want to give a minute here so everybody has a few double crochets that they can work back into just as a base for our start here. Okay, so now everybody starts like to start the row of double crochet. However you like to do it, you can chain three or chain two, whatever works for you. And then we're going to turn and now we can work back into this row and start making some post stitches. Now, as I said, double crochets are some of the most popular stitches to work post stitches with. So that's what I want to start with. And then we'll branch out into some of the other ones. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and chain one more and count that chain three as my first stitch and just skip right over that one. 
Um, I just started with a chain of 10 or so and then did eight double crochets or so across. You just want a little field of double crochets. I'm not sure I even one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, got about eight double crochets there. Again, the number doesn't matter. We just want some double crochets for us to be able to work back into. So I'm going to skip that first stitch there on the edge. I'm going to count that chain three as my first stitch. And now I want to work my first post stitch. So I'm going to work what's called a front post double crochet. So hopefully you have an idea of what a double crochet looks like. If I were to work a double crochet in the next stitch, I would yarn over, go into the top of the next stitch, pull up my loop, pull through two, yarn over, and whoops, pull through two. There we go. That would be my standard double crochet. What we're going to work first now, though, is a front post double crochet. So we are going to yarn over, just as we normally would for a double crochet. Then we find the stitch that we would normally work into the top of, but now we're going to go around the body of it, the post of it. So that's referring to this whole section down here. Normally we go under the loops at the top. Now we're going to be going around that body. So for a front post stitch, we come from the front, take our hook behind that post and pop it up on the other side. See if I can get that to focus a little better there. I'm going to pull that right back out. I've got my yarn over on my hook. I'm going to insert my hook from the front of my work where I am behind that post. So it comes all the way out on the back. Then I just want to bring it back up on the other side of that post. So now I've got my working loop, my yarn over, and that whole post on top of my hook. So then I can take my yarn yarn over and I'm going to pull that loop all the way up behind that post. Just like that. Then I would yarn over and finish it just like a regular double crochet. Pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So let's go ahead and do that again. I'm going to pull that right back out. Just like all the other stitches, it pulls right out. Love that. Okay. So now we're back here. Let's just start our first chained up double crochet there. So we're going to come to our second stitch. We're going to yarn over a little bit closer here. We're going to come down from the front. This is a front post double crochet. So we come from the front around the back of our post and up on the other side. Yarn over, pull that loop right behind your post. You might have to give your hook a little bit of a spin there in your fingers if needed. And then I like to go ahead and give it a little tug, pull that loop up a little bit there. You can see how it's going around the post of our stitch. Now we can simply yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. And we have made our first front post double crochet. You can see how that has pulled the stitch below it forward a little bit, and it's starting to pull up into that sort of cable pattern. So let's do another one of those around the next stitch. We're going to yarn over. Now we want to find the next post. Now we're going to not come back and work into those top two loops. We've worked around the post of that second stitch. So that's considered a worked stitch. Just like if we'd worked into the top of that, we'd say we already worked into that. We're going to say we've worked into that stitch. We don't want to come back and work into there unless the pattern tells us to. If we worked around that stitch and then came back and worked a regular stitch into the top of that stitch, we'd be increasing because we're working two stitches in that stitch. For now, we're just working even. So we're going to yarn over and find the very next stitch. You can go ahead and just pull those apart if you need to. Find the body there, the post of that next stitch. And then we just come right from the front again, right from the side. Around the back, pop up in the front again. Yarn over, pull, pull that loop up here to the front. I always like to give it a little bit of a tug there, get it sort of sorted, sorted out. Then yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So that would be a front post double crochet. All right, get that little bit, little bit uh, focused there, okay? So the other kind of post stitch is a back post stitch. So let's try a back post double crochet. This one is a little bit trickier to get used to. So 
it's okay to go ahead and take your time on this one. What we're going to be doing, let's talk through it first. With the front post, we came from the front. With the back post, we're going to be coming from behind the fabric. So we yarn over. Now we're going to bring our hook all the way behind our fabric. We've got our next stitch right there. That's our next post right there. So from behind, we want to pop up on the side of that post and then just push it right back down so that it comes back on the other side on the back of the fabric. So the same thing we did before, but now we're coming from behind. So this is on the back of our fabric away from us. Then just as before, we yarn over and pull that loop through. And this is where it can get a little trickier. So I wanna bring this one really close. When you're first starting out, it's very easy to accidentally pull this loop right on through or get your hook caught on the stitch, on the post of the stitch. So I really want you to try and take your time. And as you pull that hook around, back around that post, point the hooky part, <laughs> for lack of a better term, the part that actually sticks out, so it's sort of down away from that post and then spin it back up as you pull it through. I'll show you that again here in a minute, but that will help you not get caught up. If you do get caught up, it's okay. Drop the hook off your, drop the stitch off your hook and do it again. Yarn over, we come from behind our fabric, up on one side of the post, down on the other, but now we're on the back of our fabric. And we yarn over, pull that loop behind the post. And just take your time, and get it pulled out there, get it sort of arranged so it doesn't get caught up in those other loops. And then we yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So now we have two front post double crochets followed by a back post double crochet. So let me pull the hook out of the way here a little bit so we hopefully we can see the difference here. If we're looking from this side of the fabric where we're working, where we're working here, our front post stitches are on top of our fabric. You can see how our back post stitch is sort of behind our fabric. You can see those top two loops are actually facing us. They're sticking out there. So let's do another back post double crochet stitch. We're going to yarn over, find the next post. I'm just okay to go ahead and take your time and say, okay, this one's worked around this stitch. So that's the next one. And we come from behind and we go around the front. So we come back out on the back of the fabric, yarn over, pull that loop up and through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Now, I saw a question pop up about the waffle stitch and you're right, that is how the waffle stitch is made with usually three or four, depending on the pattern, front post stitches, followed by three or four back post stitches. So if you've seen that look before too, that's another post stitch pattern. So we've got two front post stitch stitches, two back post stitches. Let's switch back to front post stitches for a minute. because I really want to take us to the end of this row so we can turn it over and see how they look from the other side. So we're going to yarn over, find that next post right there. And again, you can follow those down and follow, find the very next stitch. To do the front post stitch, we're gonna go back to coming from the front, right around that post so that it pops up on the other side. Yarn over, pull that loop back around the post. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. We'll do another one. We yarn over, find that next post right there. Yarn. Go around that post from the front for a front post stitch, front post double crochet. We can go ahead and then just work that off as we did before. Now we're, we're at the end of our row and rarely, but occasionally you'll see a pattern where post stitches are worked right up to the edge, but more often than not, you're going to have sort of a standard stitch there in the end. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a double crochet there in that next stitch we're gonna call our uh, for our second row here done. So we've got our chain up, then we had two front post stitches, two back post double crochets, two front post double crochets, and I just finished it off with a double crochet there. So hopefully you can see some of that texture. Now I want you to remember what we did here. 
reason I'm going to say it again, two front post, two back post, two front post, because I want you to see what happens when we turn it over, when we turn back to work the other way. Let's look at it now from this side, from the back of our work, those front post stitches suddenly look like back post stitches. Those little loops at the top are now facing us. And those two back post stitches in the middle now look like front post stitches. Those posts are now facing out towards us. So that is one visual clue when you're looking at your front post stitches and back post stitches. Because as we continue to work in rows, you have options depending on the pattern you're making. You might be asked to work into the top two loops of any of these stitches, like it's a regular stitch, which essentially it is, just worked in a different place. Or you may be working post stitches around other post stitches. So let's go ahead and we're going to mix that up a little bit for row three. But before I get started on that, are there any questions I can answer at this point? Yeah, we have a question here from Julia. Uh, she says, I've seen the words shallow post stitch in a pattern. What is that? And is it different from the one that you were showing? It is a little different. And it's something I came up with actually a long time ago. Um, one of my first patterns, I used these things and I decided to call them shallow post stitches because I couldn't find another term for them. Um, post stitches that are shallow, so shallow post stitches, just to give you an example, I'm going to go ahead and I'll pull all this out, but just to answer this question real quick. Let's say it was a shallow front post double crochet rather than going down around that post where I might normally go. I would keep it up at the top. So I would be going under the two loops at the top of that stitch and then popping up under the two loops at the top of the next stitch. So shallow post stitches are worked at the very tip top of that post, if you will, right under those two loops, as opposed to down around the main body of the post down here. It keeps it right at the top of the post. So, but that is a whole different variation. So I hope that was helpful. And I do have a separate video tutorial for that on my channel as well. So, yeah, oh good, I'm glad to hear that you understand now, so good. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start working into row three. Now I just chained three here, so we're gonna go ahead and skip that first stitch. And here we've got what on the other side were front post stitches, but from this side look like back post stitches. So if I wanted to continue those same lines on either side of the fabric, I could do a back post stitch around what was a front post stitch from the other side, but it's going to continue that look. So to work around a post stitch, it's the same. This actually gets a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and do a back post double crochet around this one right here. Got my yarn over on my hook. And now it's a little easier to see where we come up, I think. You've got a little bit more daylight, if you will, around that post. We can go right around that post from front to back. And it's really easy because it's sticking right out there on the back. It really kind of wants me to go that way. And then we can work that off our double crochet just so we normally do and if i straighten that out you can see how that has maintained that look the top of the stitch is still facing me and even though that was a back post stitch worked around what we worked was a front post stitch because we flipped over it's maintained that line so from whatever side you're looking at if it looks like a front post stitch you can work a front post stitch around it to maintain that line, even if you worked it as the other stitch on the other side. I hope that makes sense. It's really one of those, one of those things where you start saying it, it makes sense in your head, but I hope I'm communicating that. So um, if you have questions about it, please do let me know. So like I said, you can continue working the same, or well, it'll be the opposite stitch. You can maintain that look, or you can absolutely mix it up. So from this side, that next stitch would look like a back post stitch, but I could work a front post stitch around it. Just come right from the front, pop up on the other side, and work it off just as a regular double crochet, of course. And now you can see how that's changed. We've got the little top of the first stitch facing forward on that first row, but now it looks like a front post stitch because that's what we worked there. So, you can work post stitches around regular stitches. You can work post stitches around post stitches. And you can also work regular stitches into post stitches. So in this pattern, whatever pattern you happen, might happen to be following, you might 
be working post stitches around post stitches, and then you might need to work a regular stitch. Might be a double crochet, might be a single crochet, but you can work under those top two loops of a post stitch just as you normally would as well. And then we've got a double crochet worked right in there. So that is how we maintain those. So by maintaining and by changing every few rows from post stitches to back stitches, that's how we make patterns sort of like that basket weave pattern, which you may have seen before. When we're making cables, that's when we start jumping back and forth. So if you've ever made crossed stitches before, where perhaps you worked a double crochet or a treble crochet, you skipped a couple stitches, worked a longer stitch in a stitch, and then you came back and worked in a stitch you missed, crochet cables are sort of the same thing. So let's say I wanted to do some crochet cabling with one of those, you know, more curvy patterns rather than just working in straight lines. I could yarn over for a double crochet, skip the next couple stitches, again, however many are indicated in the pattern, and I'm just going to go ahead and work a double crochet around that stitch right there at the end. That's a front post double crochet worked around that last one. But then I could probably chain one or do something like that because I need a little bit of space there. But I'm going to yarn over and now I can come back and do a post stitch around one of the stitches that I skipped. So that first stitch I skipped is right there. So now I'll just slip my hook right behind that post and make a front post double crochet right there. So now if I bring that back up here, you can see I've crossed over those stitches and made an X. And that's just going to be right there on top of the fabric. Again, I'm not going back and working into the tops of those stitches because I'm not increasing. If you're working a cable pattern where you do have increases or shapes like a sweater or maybe a hat, you may work around the post of the stitch and into the top of it. That's one way to do a increased with a post stitch. So just like with your double crochets, single crochets, and half double crochets, you've seen you can work them in any order. You can work them, you know, back and forth. You can cross them over. You can do all of these with the post stitches as well, as well, rather. It's just instead of going under those top two loops, you're going around the post of the stitch itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw a double crochet right in the end here, sort of randomly, so that we can turn and start another row because now I think I'd like to show you some of the other uh, post stitches, the stitches you can do using single crochet and half double crochet. Um, so before I do that, were there any questions about what I just did? I don't see any new questions here in the chat, but if anybody has any, please shout out, pop them in there. Great, okay. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about other stitches. I've been using double crochet so far because, as I said, that is probably the most popular stitch to use uh, with post stitches. But you can do it with absolutely any other stitch as well. So let's say we wanted to do some uh, front post and back post single crochet stitches. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and chain one and put a single crochet in that first stitch, since that's the height of our stitches for this row. And then I'm going to decide where to go next. Well, if you'll remember, at the end of that previous row, I did a cross stitch with a, with a chain in between. So I need to remember as I'm coming back to follow that line. Let me try and pull it out here. It's a little easier to see. You can have all sorts of crossed stitches and all sorts of crazy things happening with your post stitches. But when it's time to work the next row, if things are getting real wavy and confusing, what I want you to do is pull that row out and look for that row of Vs. If you're, you've been crocheting for a while, you know those Vs are at the top of your stitches and that is the order you go in. So if you've got a whole big chunky cable pattern that you're doing and you've made so many of those cable stitches and so many of those front post and back post stitches, you're having trouble you know, from just the front, trying to figure out what stitch comes next. Following that line of Vs is what's going to let you know exactly which stitch is next in the row. So you can find that one and then find the post it's attached to. It would be very easy for that, because of that cross for me to think, oh, that one right there is the next stitch. 
but it's not. It's that one in between right there. So if you turn it over and follow those V's at the top of the stitch, that's going to be your best way to help you sort of find that path across your previous row. <clears throat> so with that said, oh, thank you so much, Rhonda. So with that said, I'm going to find that very next stitch right there. There's that post. So I'm going to work a front post single crochet around that stitch right there. Again, it doesn't matter what it is. If I was making a special actual stitch pattern, it might matter. But right now we're just practicing the stitches. So we're going to go ahead and work it right around that post. So just as before, I'm going to come from the front, but this time because it's single crochet, no yarn over. So we just go from the front, pop up on the other side, then we can yarn over, pull that loop, or I just did a back post, didn't I? Or no, it is a front post. I'm getting myself mixed up, sorry. Front post, back post, getting myself turned around. We pull that loop around. Let's do that again, because I got myself mixed up. We've got the next stitch. We come from the front for a front post stitch, around the back, pop up over the other side, yarn over, pull that loop up and around. And this time, might want to give it a little extra, because we don't have that first yarn over and pull through to sort of lift ourselves up. With the single crochets, I really like to give them a little extra tug. Then I'll yarn over and pull through. So you can see that's a real short one. But absolutely, you can still do post stitches with single crochets. Let's do another one. I'm going to find, go ahead and pull those stitches apart so you can find that next post. Go from the front, come around to the back, yarn over, pull that loop up and around real gently. Give it a little bit of a tug because it's that single crochet and it wants to be short. Yarn over and just finish your single crochet. Let's do a back post single crochet. I'm gonna go ahead and come from the back. Pretty easy now that you've joined the double crochets, right? Now we just don't have the yarn overs. We come from the back around that next stitch, yarn over, pull that loop up and through. Here we are. Give that one a little tug as well to get it up there towards the top of the stitch, and then yarn over and pull through. Let's do another one. I'm going to pull my work apart so I can find that next post right there. Come from behind, around the front of the stitch, pop back out on the back, yarn over, pull that loop up and through, and yarn over and pull through. Now, we mentioned shallow post stitches before. When I use, when I use those shallow post stitches, I typically do it, I think, um, I really like to do it with these single crochets. It creates a really nice effect. Um, but as I said, you can do it with any of those stitches. So we've got a couple front post single crochets, a couple back post single crochets. Let's do another front post single crochet around this stitch right here, just to finish off our little row. Oop, here we are. And this is another thing that can happen too. You can see here I'm working a, a front post stitch around a front post stitch, but when I yarned over, because I'm at the end, my yarn really wants to come around the end of my work here and just sort of Kind of a, I know there's a lot going on here, but I hope you can see there. It really wants to come around the end and sort of pinch all that in. That's not what I want. I don't want it going all the way around. Once I get that strained out, once I block it, that loop's going to be too loose. So as you come to the end of your work like this, you can see here I've got my chain three hanging out on the side. I'm just going to, as I put my hook in for that post stitch, kind of use my non hook hand to really hold that stitch out of the way and make sure that that yarn, as I yarn over, just goes around the stitch itself and not all the way around the end of that row. It's a real easy thing to do and not realize you've done it. And then, like I say, when you go to sort of straighten out all your work lately, you're going to have a weird loop there hanging out. So you don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and throw another single crochet there right in the top of my turning chain. And we have made some front and back post single crochets. Again, just like the single crochets, you know, and love, we're just inserting our hook in a different place to make them. So let's go ahead and do some half double crochets. Now with half double crochet, very controversial. I'm a big fan of just chaining one, but you can do whatever you like to do for your half double crochets. And I'm just going to work a regular one here right in the end to give us our, just our little solid border there. So front post half double crochet, back post half, half double crochet. Same thing we've been doing all along. We just have to yarn over, and this time we pull through all three. 
Now, this is going to be really a little bit more difficult because at this point now we're working around single crochets. Working into, into single crochets for post stitches is more difficult. That's why I started us out with double crochets. Um, treble crochets are also very easy. Just, you know, take longer to, to make. Same, same thing. Treble crochet, if you haven't made before, we just yarn over twice. Then you have to pull yarn over and pull through two loops three times to finish it off. So finding the post of the single crochet, as I say, can be quite difficult and it's not very often done. Um, you really sort of have to really get in there and know your stitch anatomy to really pull it apart and find where those stitches are. As I say, not my favorite. Let's go ahead and try and make a couple and then I'm going to go ahead and switch to making them into the double crochets so that they're a little bit easier to see. But I'm going to yarn over and I want to really find that next stitch. So what can I do to help me do that? I know a single crochet has those two loops at the top. It's got the what I always call the little cave. When I'm teaching new crocheters, we insert, we go into the little cave right there, but we want to go sort of right underneath that little cave because we know that's our opening. We want to try and go underneath it and around it. And as I say, it's not always easy. Absolutely one of the harder ones to do. But I think I went too far with that one. Kind of have to finagle it. There we go. Get my hook in there. And hopefully if I bring it up real close, you can see I've just gone around that single crochet stitch. Again, going around to single crochet, going into single crochets for uh Post stitches is something very rarely done, but I wanted to cover it just to include everything. So we're going to yarn over, pull that loop up and around for a front post stitch. And because it's a front post half double crochet, once we've got those three loops on the hook, we just yarn over and pull through all three. There we are. So a little bit different look again with half double crochet. Those double crochets were sort of long. Those single crochets were real short, the half double crochet in between, and also a little bit wider, I find. So let's do that again. We're going to yarn over. We're going to go from the front around the stitch. Yarn over and pull up our loop. And yarn over and pull through all three, just like a regular half double crochet. For the back post half double crochet, we yarn over, find that next stitch. Helps to sort of wiggle it around a little bit. I use my nails and all sorts of tools. You can use stitch markers, whatever works for you. Come from behind that stitch. I'm gonna have to sort of shove my hook in there since it's a single crochet. And then around the front of it. There we are. Around to the back. Yarn over. Carefully pull that loop through. Ooh, I didn't know for sure I was gonna make that. Pulling those around those single crochets, very easy to get your hook stuck there. And then again, because it's half double crochet, we just yarn over and pull through all three loops to finish that one off. So you can always, again, if we look and see those front post double crochets, that post is going to be facing towards us. And it's a back post double crochet. You can see the top of the stitch of the previous row, those two little loops looking right at you. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn off here just so it's a little easier to come back over here and we're just going to flip my swatch right over so I can work into the opposite sides of these double crochets here. But I'm just going to join my yarn here. The single crochet so that it's nice and attached. There we are. Little quick cheater move there. And now just so we can get a little bit better look at those half double crochets, but now worked around a double crochet. Let's yarn over, go around the post for a front post double half double crochet. Yarn over, pull up your loop, and yarn over and pull through all three loops to finish. For the back post, it would be yarn over, find that next stitch in your row, come from behind, yarn over and pull up that loop, and pull through all three to finish your stitch. So just like you would normally do for a half double crochet, but the front post, back post is literally just where you're inserting and pulling out that hook. To pull that loop out and around. So if you've done those single crochets, half double crochets, and double crochets before, you can post stitch now. It's just a matter of, like I say, where you insert your hook. So other stitches, of course, can also be turned into post stitches. You can do treble crochets, I mentioned. 
Treble crochets are very popular as well in uh, post stitch patterns. I would say double crochets, probably the most popular, but treble crochets right up there because you can create those really long, beautiful lines. And if you're doing one of those more complicated crochet patterns, um, I'm sure trebles would be more likely to be involved. There is a blanket. I don't know if uh, Lillian's put the link in the chat yet. I wish I had it to show it to you guys, but it's really gorgeous. And I really wouldn't be surprised. Um, it's a great example of cable work. It's a great example of post stitches. And I would be really surprised if it didn't use um, some treble crochet stitches. So just really quickly to go ahead and demonstrate that as well. To do a front post treble crochet, we would yarn over twice rather than just once. Then we find the stitch we're working into. And if it's a beautiful cable stitch, it could be any of these stitches. I've seen cable patterns where you're skipping. You've got so many yarn overs, you can skip 10 stitches to work around the next one. So you really want to follow that top line so you know exactly which one is that 10th one. So we're not going to skip 10. Let's just skip two. Let's follow that top line though. We worked around that stitch last. So we want to skip the next two, find the one after that. And then we can find the post right underneath the top of that one. So that is that is your path so that you don't get mixed up there. So for the front post treble crochet, we'll go right around there just as we've been doing for our front post. Remember, front post become from the front. And so we end up on the front on the other side. Yarn over. Make sure that yarn comes down in front of your stitch and doesn't get caught up here. Pull up that loop. Now we've got four loops on the hook there. So then we just yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So again, just a standard treble, but worked around the post and it creates that really beautiful long line there. So that is some very basics of post stitches. Now I mentioned before how if you've worked around the post, you wouldn't normally work into the top because then you'd be increasing. You'd be making two stitches essentially in that stitch, which you might do depending on the pattern. You, may, you might make two stitches in this stitch and then skip the next stitch, in which case you'd still be working evenly. You'd have the same number of stitches or you might have a pattern where you do need to increase. So there's a couple of different ways to increase with post stitches. So I thought I would go ahead and uh, address that a little bit right now. Now, right here, I just made a treble crochet in that stitch. One way that I could increase would be to work another stitch, another post stitch around that stitch. It could be another treble crochet, it could be a double crochet, whatever the pattern happens to uh, call for. So if you're told to make two stitches in one stitch, when you do it normally, you just go right under those top two loops twice, right? We've probably all done that. But to make a post stitch twice around one stitch, we've already got one post stitch around that post. So how do we go in there again? We just go right underneath the one we just made. So you can see right there are the loops at the base of that treble crochet going around that post. I'll pull it out a little bit more. It might be easier to see right there. There we are. There's that treble around that. You just want to go right underneath, right below. Oop. There we go. This time it's just a double crochet, but I have made an increase. I've worked two post stitches around the same stitch. So that's one way I could increase with post stitches. Let me go ahead and pull that one out just to make it a little easier to see here. The other way I mentioned before is I could, in fact, go back and work under those top two loops. So let's say instead of having a front post double crochet around this stitch, we're now just supposed, we're supposed to front post double treble crochet and double crochet into that stitch. We've got our front post treble crochet made. So now we would go back and find those top two loops of the post that that treble's worked around and put a double crochet right in the top of that stitch. And you get a different look again. When I worked the post stitch there, it kept that cabled look go going. Now that stitch falls to the back, almost behind a little bit, even though I made it second, it almost feels like it falls behind that treble crochet I made. So there are so many different interesting moves that you can make. Once you've mastered post stitches, you really can mix them up in all these beautiful ways and get all these different effects. As you can see, you can increase with them. Decreasing with them is not very different. I'm going to pull these out so we've got a little bit more room to work with. If you've worked a decrease before, you can decrease with post stitches as well. 
I'm going to go back to double crochets because that's again most popular. But let's say I was supposed to front post double crochet two together over the next two stitches. It's a lot of words, but if we break it down, it's front post double crochet, which we've covered. It's double crochet two together, which you've probably done. And over the next two stitches, well, of course that's where it is. So let's go to those next two stitches. We're going to yarn over and do a front post double crochet around the next stitch. But just like any other decrease, I'm going to stop when I have two loops left on my hook. Then I'll yarn over again, go to the next stitch, start a front post double crochet around that stitch. But now I'll stop when I have three loops left on the hook. And then I'll yarn over and pull through all three. So now I've got two legs or two posts, if you will, in this front post double crochet two together, just like I would have two legs and a double crochet two together, but now they're worked as post stitches. And at the top, we've got just that one, one set of loops there. So we've decreased down to one stitch. So again, this could be with the single crochets, with the half double crochets, with treble crochets, any sort of, um, you know, any sorts of these stitches, just combining them with the other moves that you already know. So the other thing I wanted to show you, again, it's just easier to pull these out a little bit here, is when you are working many multiple stitches, uh, post stitches around a post. And this would be for something, for example, for wiggle crochet or for crocodile stitches. Let me pull this little sample back up here and actually pull it around from the back. I don't know if you can see, but the way crocodile stitches are made is you've got a whole bunch of double crochets usually worked around the post of a stitch. And when you work a whole bunch there, they really stand up and create some really great shapes. So for instance, let's say this was a wiggle crochet or a uh, crocodile stitch pattern where I am going to be working five double crochets around the post of a stitch. Let's go ahead and do that. We've got one post right here. I'm going to yarn over and I'm just going to start working the front post stitches around it. So I'll make one front post double crochet around that post, which would be the next one like we've been doing, but then I'm just going to keep adding them. I'm just going to go right underneath. So there's a second one. Then I can go right down there for a third one. You can see I'm just putting them right underneath each time, I'm not trying to go on top of them. It's right underneath them, working my way basically down the post of the stitch that I'm working around. So there's a fourth one. You can see I'm really sort of holding onto my fabric, however, is comfortable. So I can really sort of hold that post stitch out to keep crocheting around it. And now I have worked five double crochets all around that post. And look at this great shape we're getting. Look at that. If you've worked crocodile stitches or seen crocodile stitches before, you might recognize that right there. That's the first half of a crocodile stitch. It's also the beginning of a wiggle crochet. Then what could we do next? Well, depending on the pattern, it'll tell you where to go. But for our little sample here, let's jump over to this next one. And this time, let's make five double crochets around this next post stitch. But because we've worked our way down this post, let's start at the bottom and work our way up instead. So something a little different. We're going to come over to that next post right there is our next stitch. Get that straightened out a little. There we are. Going to yarn over for a double crochet. Going to find that post and sort of hold it up towards me right there. So I know that's the one I'm working around. Now I'm going to start working my double crochets around the boat, the bottom of that stitch. So now that one's at the bottom of this post, but I'm going to keep going. Now I'm going to be above them. And this right here demonstrates, I think, one of my favorite things about crochet. I've just told you all these things about you start from the top, you know, you can work them underneath, all this, etc. And here I am breaking that roll immediately. Now we're working from the bottom of the post to the way up because it's just a matter of what you want to do. It's every time you make a new move, it's not necessarily wrong. It's just creating a different stitch or a technique. So now I've got five double crochets going up that post. I'm back at the top of that row. And if I lay these out, look at that. Basically, we've made what's called a dragon state scale or a crocodile stitch just by making those front post stitches 
but by making a whole bunch of them down one post and then on up the other. Again, still post stitches, same technique, but a different result. You get a different look. You could also have a pattern where instead of laying these down like this into scales where they stood up, that would be your wiggle crochet. You could work back and forth across those post stitches and have something that sticks up really 3D. You also see what I was talking about um, earlier when I mentioned if you were making a basket and you had a flat bottom, if you work these post stitches around there, you can see how they would stand up if you work those around that final edge. Um, let me see, there was one thing here. And then I wanted to bring up this square right here, a beautiful square from the crochet along. Now that you've seen some of those post stitch in action, hopefully it'll be a little, a little bit easier to see. We've got some long post stitches right here. You can see that we're worked right back down around that post. And then these, that's that little detailing I was talking about before from working back post stitches. When you do one in a different color, you're going to see the base of that stitch that you've made popping up towards the front. And there's the tops of those stitches of the row below. So you can use those stitches not only to create cables or crocodile stitches, but just for general interest in creating really gorgeous overlay designs, um, little details like this, little all sorts of little things that you can do with post stitches beyond the usual crochet cables, crocodile stitches, wiggle crochet, little fine details, um, making big moves like the sides of a basket, lots of other, other possibilities. Here's another one of those squares again, so you can get a, another look now that you've seen how they've made this one, all the, croc, all the crocodile stitches, all the uh, cable stitches, all the post stitches, if you will, are made on one side of the fabric. And when I was on the other side of the fabric, I made a few back post stitches, but mostly single crochets. So this is another way that it's a mix. On the front here, we've got some, uh, I believe these were double crochet post stitches. But there's also a lot of single crochet stitches. So by changing colors, we got a different color background behind those. Um, and then it's a little easier. I could bring up the, uh, the white pillows, but I think it's actually a little bit easier to see on this one. Um, and this one's a little different too, because it was worked in the round. But here we have some more of those crossed over cables. By just working them over each other, pull that up, it's a little bit easier to see you can create yet another great design. So many, so many possibilities. Like I say, from the, from the crocodile stitches to the wiggle crochet to the beautiful cabling, so many great things you can do. So with that said, are there any questions I can answer? Sorry, I'm just quickly reading one. Oh, sure. um, it's my excuse to uh, take a little sip of water, so. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so there's one question here. Uh, when Tamara post-stitched one side of the pillow, did she do that while she was making it or did she post-stitch after the side was completed and then went back and post-stitched? The post-stitches, ah, um, either one of the pillows, the case is gonna be the same. The post-stitches are made along with the rest of the pattern. Let me try and scooch it up here. Now, I'll be honest, it's been a long time since I made this one. Um, so my memory isn't perfect, although I have used this stitch pattern in several, several, different, uh, several different designs. But here you can see, these are, I believe, double crochet post stitches over a background of solid stitches. But all these stitches were crocheted at the same time. So that's where you've kind of got to, this is the sort of design where you have to pay attention to your stitch count, you're going to have, you're going to work some regular stitches and then a post stitch and then some regular stitches and then a post stitch. Um, you're going to have one of those, um, you're going to have one of those decreases, <laughs> one of those big decreases where you're going around other post stitches. And this has something that I didn't, I forgot to show and now I've misplaced my hook. There it goes. So in this one, I wanted to show when you go to work around a post stitch, we saw that I did this a lot, right? We went under just that post of the one stitch to make the next stitch up. There are times where you might work around both of those legs. Because remember, if this is a decrease and you've got just that one stitch you made at the top, when you go to work under that stitch, you need to make sure that you stitch your hook under both of those legs. So that's something to think about too. It might just be one stitch, but it's, if it's got two legs, 
and you're making a post stitch around that stitch, you want to make sure that you get your hook under both of those legs before you yarn over and pull that loop through to finish that stitch. So I, I hope I hope that explained that well. And I saw another question pop up, but I'm afraid it was too quick for me to read. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a question. Um, more just a flattering comment. Oh, well, Nancy, thank you. Nancy <laughs> says, uh, your stitches opened up my mind to so many possibilities. Impressive. Thanks so much for the class. Oh, good. I'm so glad. And I, I wish I had a uh, basket weave stitch pattern to show you, but this one is similar. Ooh, it's, I know it's difficult to see in the white on camera. Um, didn't design it to show in class, but uh, you can kind of see here. Here's those, those back post stitches. I hope you can see it. Um, and there's those tops of those stitches. Here's some front post stitches. So this one isn't a basket weave. It's almost more of like a diagonal basket weave. But hopefully if I push that down a little away from the camera, you can see you can get sort of almost a diagonal pattern. We've got front post stitches here, back post stitches there. It creates that horizontal ridge. And then, of course, the vertical ridges would be the front post stitches. So just, yeah, mixing up those, whoops, mixing up those front and back post stitches again, all those things. And then, of course, um, I showed you how to do those crocodile stitches. Although I will say when I make crocodile stitches, I always like to put a little chain one in between those two sides. But uh, just another, yeah, same thing, post stitches, more things that you can do. Um, and yeah, I do recommend too, um, nothing to do with post stitches, but if you get a chance, I do recommend that you try out the Karen Big Donut Ogo. I, if you've crocheted before, I'm sure you've probably used regular skeins. These things are so tangle free. I really am loving using them. They didn't ask me to even talk about these today. I just want to let you know that these things are so great. I hate tangles. I am a big, 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 big hater of tangles. It's like my nemesis. And um, these things are such a dream to work with. So I definitely recommend you check these. Look for these in your local Michaels. Um, if they don't have them out on the shelf, you know, make a request. They've probably got them in back and just haven't had a chance to get them out yet. So I guess we'll go ahead and come back to the other camera. Unless there were any last questions I could address with my haunted camera arm. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, just lots of thank yous. Um, really great class. Thank you so much. Great. Well, thank you all so much for joining me. And um, again, be sure to grab those links from the chat here in the last minute or so. Um, there are tons of gorgeous cable crochet patterns on your inspirations. Anytime you see texture like that, there's a good bet that there's going to be some post stitches involved. Um, so definitely check those out. And I've got a few on Moogly as well. So I hope you'll check those out as well. And have a great night. And we'll see you again for another Michael's Community Classroom. Thanks so much, Tamara. And thanks everyone for joining us today for this live Community Classroom with Michael's. Don't forget to share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag Yarnsfo. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and the recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.